As I was redesigning the facade, I wanted to break up the cover over the wall spikes to give easier access. If something went wrong, I was having to peel away the front panel, then remove the spikes, then carefully remove the whole wall and platform section around them, so I wanted to separate the upper and lower halves and make the front panel easier to remove. I carefully pulled apart and reinstalled the lower section, then redesigned the upper, replacing some of the bricks up the side with tiles to make removing the panel easier. I got thinking about adding in a crank arm to manually wind and power the build, and where I might position one. I may have overthought this a little, but I thought placing it on the far right of the build might make it awkward for left-handed people to wind it while watching what was happening, so I figured somewhere in the centre would be the best compromise. As it happened, the centre was right around the area I'd just been working, and it did appear to be a suitable place for a crank handle, with a good clear wall section and a clear pathway to the main drive shaft. When connecting a handle directly to the drive shaft, it had to be turned at quite a quick pace to get things moving at a suitable speed, so I wanted to increase the gear ratio to multiply the input. LEGO makes a connector for coupling together bevelled gears at a right angle, but it doesn't allow for much of an increase in gear ratio. I had in mind a 1 to 3 or even 1 to 4 ratio, providing it didn't become too difficult to turn the handle. The path to the drive shaft may have been clear, but that did have the downside of there being nowhere to connect in a new drive shaft, so I had to awkwardly shoehorn in a new lift arm across the frame. It still needed additional support at the front, but I gave it a very wobbly test drive to gauge the performance. The speed looked about right, and it wasn't much of an effort to turn the handle, though it did become a little tighter as the stepper mechanism moved the spikes. I was happy enough though. I planned to use a longer arm for the crank to generate more force, and through using connectors to build it, I had a few colour choices available. Starting out with dark orange and reddish brown, I felt it blended in too well with the facade behind it. I thought it might look good to colour it in Sonic's colours. It would certainly help it pop, but I found it difficult putting together a combination that suitably represented Sonic. I tried a single splash of colour on the handle only, but I still didn't feel it stood out well enough. As I'd had to give space for the 36 tooth gear within the frame, the new drive shaft had placed the handle within striking distance of the grass tiles, meaning it had to stick out further to avoid them and leaving a slight wobble in the arm. Performance looked good though. There wasn't a lot left to design at this point. I didn't really feel like tackling the Eggman battle just yet, but there was still one other essential missing piece. The background. Having been looking at screenshots from the game, I already had a plan to build the background sideways, and thanks to the studio's recent reference image feature, I was able to add in plates directly over a screenshot. Looking at in-game platforms, they appeared to match the brighter oranges of the background, but the LEGO set designers had represented these in dark orange. I felt dark orange better matched the mid-tone areas, but I was conflicted about wanting to match the platforms. Looking at other colours and their availability, Medium Nugget seemed another good match, but now my light and mid-tone areas were being inverted. I decided on bright light yellow for the highlights, and wondered whether orange might work better for the light tones. It did look good on the computer screen, but I thought it could look too bright on the model itself. Comparing physical plates, I did feel orange was a little too bright, so I carried on with the Medium Nugget, though I decided on switching it with the dark orange. I'm really not an artistic person, and struggle to create patterns and randomisation, so I chose to follow the game art, but did try to scale it down a bit. Scale was going to be a slight issue with the background of the background. I wouldn't be able to place the distant mesa peaks far enough away for them to appear smaller, and LEGO doesn't make reduced sized plates. At least not anymore. I didn't want to increase the scale of the foreground, as it would look out of scale with the overall build, so I figured I'd see how it looked at the same scale, and the results were decent enough. I had the same problem with the scale of the waterfall, making it difficult to replicate the wavy highlights and create the illusion of movement. I spotted that I'd actually got a little carried away with the height of the waterfall here, and had to cut it back in line with the foreground.
Looking at the current height of things, it seemed the backdrop would adequately cover the area I needed it to, though I wasn't sure I'd want it to double the height of the overall build. The trees were better scaled to work with LEGO. I struggled more here with shading them to create definition in their shapes and the appearance of light falling over them. I actually went away and looked into how artists used to create artwork for old games like this, and it's quite interesting to see. After six hours of work, I was really happy with the results. Painfully slow going, but worth it. 